Open your Bible, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5, 6 to 11. Deuteronomy chapter 5, 6 to 11. We're going to hear God's word together. Here's the word of God. Uh, we're going to start looking at um, Ten Commandments. Uh, God uh, gave this commandment um, through Moses at Mount Sinai. And um, <clears throat> if I give you a brief um, explanation, first commandment to uh, Fourth commandment, it's going to be our relationship to God. So, our relationship to God. And then fifth to tenth commandment, it's going to be our relationship to the people around us. So, If you look at um, the commandment that God, uh, Jesus, uh, gave us, he shortened that, like, you know, summarized that. First commandment of all is going to be love your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your uh, will. And then second one, love your enemy. Not enemy. <laughs> love your neighbors uh, just as you love yourself. So, It's about our relationship to God and our relationship to people. So if you have the rightful relationship with God, then you're going to have rightful relationship with other people. So uh, once again, this Ten Commandment is not just scary. Um, oh, I need to you know, keep that you know, commandment. It's really strict. strict. And then, it's not about that. It's our relationship. It's all about relationship. So, um, we need to really focus on how he presented, how he communicated these commandments uh, with his people, with us, right? At first, he, God identifies Himself as the one who brought them out of Egypt. This is how he identified himself. So, I'm the one who brought you out of Egypt, the house of slavery. So, you are there as slaves, but I have brought you out. I saved you. I redeemed you. So this is who I am, okay? You are there suffering, groaning, right? Crying for help. That's why I heard your cry. And I stepped down. I went down. And I have brought you out from slavery. So it's, what kind of relationship is that? Love. Our relationship with God is based upon love. He wants us to be with us. 
He wants to save us from darkness, from kind of wondrous life. We were wandering around here and there just like, like orphans. Do not even know where to go, where to be comforted. But God heard our cries and he sent his own and only son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, to pay for our sins. And that's the relationship that we have. Don't just take that commandment as some kind of duties. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it's based upon what love relationship. That's his way of approaching to us. If you are in love relationship, uh, there's no reason for us to have come up with some kind of regulations, right? But there's a, some kind of, uh, kind of mindset we need to really help one another and keep uh, safe. Like, you know, if you really love that person, you need to protect that's why you're going to come up with some kind of, you know, ways to protect one another, one another. That's what it is. So God has given us these commandments for us, not for himself. You know what? This is, you know, this is who I am. I created you. I saved you. I redeemed you. That's why you got to do this. You're my slaves. No, he's not saying that. You have duty to you, complete. Love relationship. He came up with this for us because he loves us. He wants us to know what kind of law, what kind of commandments that we need to follow and keep so that we can have rightful relationship with God and rightful relationship with other people. If we really know what he has done for us, then that great act of redemption should have been uh, motive enough uh, for us to listen to God's law and obey it. Right? So if we know how he, what he did, that's the great act of redemption. And that gives us some kind of enough motivation to obey God, to Keep his commandments. And once again, what kind of mindset do we need to have? When we listen to his commandments, hear and learn and be careful to do them. Not just hear, not just learn, but do them. Be careful to do that. Okay. So <clears throat> we're going to go over uh, this first, our relationship to God. So it's not abstract at all. God gave us specific and detailed instruction for us to uh, have some kind of relationship and build up his, our relationship with God. None but the own one and only God. At Mount Sinai, Israelites, the people of Israel, they married God. So, it's a marriage based upon love relationship. In Mount Sinai, they made, uh, God made a covenant with them. And that's the relationship that they had. It's a covenant center 
relationship. So <clears throat> um, I explained about covenant, right? Uh, if you keep it blessing, if you break it, then curse. But if you really get to know Abrahamic covenant, the, the covenant that God made, that's the one side covenant. Uh, even though you might break that, I will take full responsibility because I love you. I know that you are so weak to keep all these commandments and laws. You know what? But I'm going to make the way for you to come back to me. That's a covenantal relationship, covenant center relationship. Like I said, unconditional. But it's kind of confused when you hear about unconditional love. But God has given us the commandments. We need to understand correctly. It's not about duty. He saved us unconditionally. He loves us unconditionally. But God gave us these commandments for us to have build up relationship, intimate relationship with God. It's not about, okay, I love you. Then and she could go to everywhere and do so many things that she wanted to do. That's, that's not the relationship. You know what I'm saying? All the laws that God has given us is the laws that strengthened our relationship with God. <clears throat> no other God. He said, no other God before me. That Makes sense, right? If you marry God, then no other God. If you put someone else, if you put something else, then that's adultery. That's why God tried to explain our relationship with God as a marriage, husband and wife. So if you put someone else in between, then that's adultery, right? Especially uh, in pagan culture, uh, idolatry related to physical intercourse with the prostitute at the temple. So it does make sense for them. No other God before me. Don't try to look for something else, someone else. I love you. If you, let me ask, if you love somebody else and that person is looking around, other guys, other girls, how do you feel? Can you accept that? Is it rightful? It's not just, oh, she's kind of pretty, uh, he is handsome. It's not about that. Having intercourse with them. Do you, do you accept that? But we just take it really lightly. Okay, I don't have idols. I don't bow down before that. But that's not what I'm saying. That's not he, what he's trying to say. That's the relationship distracting So he won pure love. And through Hosea, um, God tried to communicate his heart. Hosea, how, how do you feel? Your wife committing adultery. How do you feel? That's how, how, how I feel towards my people. I love these people. 
That's why I brought them out of Egypt. I opened the way for them to be saved, to come back to me. But they are looking around, looking for some satisfaction, their own satisfaction. Even though that wouldn't give any satisfaction to them. No other God before me. Meditate upon this. No other God before me. Uh, Pastor Sam gave us uh, some, you know, pictures, right? Engineer Eastern culture, they uh, have their own idols, like really tiny ones. But these statues will help you to uh, earn a lot of money and protect your health. So they had you know, different, several, like tons of tons of, you know, statues. They rely on that. When they have some kind of problem with health, then they're going to keep it and then pray and bow down before that. No other God before me. If you think about ideology at the time, as polytheism, uh, when they thought about God, it's more than one God. So it might be two, three, four, a lot. That's a polytheism. So it's not one and only God, but more than one God. So they come up with their own gods if they need it. Right? Pantheism. Everything is God. So you could mean, put meaning in everything. Everything is got, it developed in that way. In these days, postmodern. You are God. That's new age message. So, more than one God, everything is God, and you are God. You could become a God. So focus on you. You are everything. So, in these days, we are living in this age, postmodern. Um, think about your prayer topics, and think about the purpose of your Christian life, Christian journey. Oftentimes, it's all about us. Lord, what I want is this. I want that. I want this. Would you allow me to achieve this? Would you help me out to achieve this? It's all about me centered. Even Christians, even people of God, they don't even know why. That's the ideology of this age, this generation. Seems like we are kind of worshiping God, but we are worshiping ourselves, using God. None but the one and only God. That's first commandment of the Ten Commandments. No other God before me. Please. He's saying that.
Okay. All of us might say that, okay, I, I, I'm clean with this. All right. I, I believe. I really believe that God is only and only God. There's no other God before him. Is it really? Um, like I said, the reason why God brought up this is because people of Israel at the time, they knew God, the name of God, right? Yahweh. Because he's the one who brought them out of Egypt. And they, you know, had some kind of uh, system uh, to worship him, you know, something like that. But in their reality, in their reality, they rely on something else. Even though they might say that, okay, I believe that God is the one and only God. There is no other God before me, before him. So I don't put anything, I don't doubt about his uniqueness. He's the only God. But in our reality, we carve some images. We come up with something else. Like plan B. Okay, I believe in you. I trust in you. I pray to you. But plan B. Hiding. In our reality, when you face some kind of problems, crisis, we don't go to God. We try to look for something else around us. That's idolatry. We are not coming up with you know, some statues. Sometimes we go to movies, cigarette. Drinking, games. I'm not saying that all of them are bad. You could enjoy that. But in our reality, for our own peace, rest, satisfaction, we go to them. We are carving some images before God. So he came up with you know, this commandment. He emphasized on this, right? It's kind of really, he's kind of playing around. Not playing around. And seriously, tried to communicate with his people. And then he spoke out of fire, threatening them. And then gave this ten commandments. We might think that, oh, I already know. Why did he give this ten commandments to us? It is applying, still applicable to us. We have a lot of this, plan B. We have a lot of you know, ways to deal with our problems on our own ways, right? That's why I said there are practical Practical atheist, which means even though we say that we believe in God, we trust in God, but in our reality, it doesn't seem like you know, we believe in God. We act like you know, atheist. We don't even believe in God. We don't even believe in His power to deliver us, to rescue us from problems, from restless life. We're trying to Meet our needs in our own ways. God hate the most. Don't put any God before me. Don't even carve any images. Let me read. Verse 8. You shall not make for yourself 
an image in the form of anything, anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. He doesn't want anything from heaven above beneath the earth, even in the water, anything, any form. Which means at that time, you know, people of Israel, they came up with that. And then he said, You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealousy God. Punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. He identifies them. They're hating me by doing that. So he's talking about relationship once again. It's not about duties. Okay? You got to check up on your relationship. We need to check up on our relationship. Am I hating God? No, of course. But we are. That's why he gave us some kind of instruction. Kind of fence. This is these standards. Do you really say, do you really say that you love me? then don't ever do that. If you think about God, He gave up His own and only Son. And He became nothing to save us. He gave everything to us. And we try to save some of them. Lord, this is my life. This is my desire. This is what I want to do. Don't touch that. Of course, you know, I'm going to, you know, praise you. I'm going to serve the church. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm a part of this team and part of that. I devote my life to you. But don't touch this area. This is part of my life. This is my desire. Some people say that, wait for me. I'll I'll get there. But I want to enjoy my life right now. Sometimes people love money. Um, I want to really, uh, I can let you know that. Uh, if you cannot tithe, that affects your relationship. That tells your relationship with God. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I love you. You are the only one who could brought you out of Egypt. But we still kind of afraid of giving tithe, which means we rely on our money. Of course, I love you, but I cannot give it to you. I need to survive, Lord. You know that. But we don't really interest everything to him. That means we have plan B. We don't really trust in his care, his provision. That's why for 40 years, he said, don't worry about it. You're not slaves. You're not orphan. Every day I will provide manna to you. Don't worry about it. If you need what? Meat? I will give it to you. If you live worship center life. That's it. Sometimes people really rely on career. You know what? I got into this job. I I got into this school. I need to really, you know, keep up with the studies. I need to really keep up with this job and my career. And then they 
ended up compromising their faith. God, you understand me, right? You understand my situation. I need to do this. I don't have time. I'm kind of scared. If I don't this, I don't do this, then I'll be left out. I'll be kicked out. We love careers. We love people. We love our ex- own experience. We rely on that. He said, Any, anything. You might call, you might name something else, but he said, anything. There is no exception. So I titled the sermon, Is It Really? We know that. We know that Jesus is the Christ, Son of the living God. He's a king, prophet, priest. Is it really? Do you really need Jesus Christ in your life? Do we really need Jesus Christ? Who do you fear? They bow down before uh, the carved images. They made it, and they kind of feared them. They worshiped them. They made it for themselves. <laughs> they bow down before that. Ridiculous, isn't it? People made the social system. We are kind of uh, limited by that. Man made. He said, after all, it's all about you for yourself. So we need to make God real in our lives. He is real, right? He is really one and only God. And He's really the one who brought us, brought out of Egypt, sin and curses. And He said, I love you. Don't worry about anything. I'll provide you. Just come to me and you're gonna living, you know, you're gonna drink the living water. You're not gonna be thirsty again. All the waters, fake waters out there, you will be thirsty again. But living water will not make you thirsty again. I am here with you. This is second commandment. And Catholics, they got rid of this second commandment. Because they... (laughs) carve a lot of images and sell it to the people. They cannot include this second commandment in their commandments. Uh, even Cole testified that I can explain that, right? They have a lot of, you know, statues of, what, saint. You know, t- tomorrow we have a lot of you know, great, you know, important, you know, schedules and, and activities. We don't want rain. Then there are certain saints that you, you, you're you going to pray for. Not having rain for tomorrow. If you lose your cell phone, then you're going to pray to certain saints. I, I forgot about the name of the saint. Yeah. Here we go. If you lose something and pray to that saint. We laugh at that, right? But we do the same thing. We don't have saint, but we, don't, we have something else, someone else. That's why they got rid of this. And then last commandment, they divided into two and made 
Ten Commandments. He's asking even before the world. That's the third commandment. He said, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuse his name. I told you, um, a lot of people use the name of God for their own sake, like, you know, expressing their, you know, uh, emotion. Jesus. You know, you, know, you know what I'm saying? God, my, you know, God damn, or something like that. Um, I don't know why they came up with those kind of, you know, you know, usage. It's kind of normal for us to use that. I was so mad in the beginning. How could they use my God, the name of my God, in that way? Jesus Christ. What is that? We don't feel anything about that. Think about it. If someone else used your parents' name in that way, we feel so bad, angry, right? But we don't get angry towards that, the name of God. His name is on the ground. People step on it. What about us then? Are we really using his name in a proper way? I mean, are we honoring him even before the world? Do you really acknowledge me before the world? Before people? Like I told you, even though I got saved, um, I really, you know, received salvation. And I had a desire to share the gospel, but I was kind of shameful to pray before meals when I was in high school. And then I, you know, try to you know, take it to my lunchbox, and then I pray, Lord, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I ate. Um, it's kind of one of the examples we are kind of hesitate to bring up the name of God and the gospel. What if, you know, he act, react like this or she react like that? What if she or he thinks of me some kind of, you know, jerk or something? If I talk about spiritual reality, if I talk about the name of God, if I talk about the message of salvation, Do you honor me even before the world? We need to get mad when we see people abusing, misusing the name of God. Think about media. They are doing so many stuff abusing the name of God. And people of Israel, people of God, Christians, remnants, don't have any grudge against that. Lord, let me change the flow of this culture. Let me change this spiritual flow. You have g given me this you know, talent and skill. Let me be used. We don't have that desire. We don't have that passion. The name of Jesus Christ was put down on the ground. We got to raise the banner of the gospel as the children of God. We need to restore the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. You know what? Satan, he, you know, he's afraid of the name of Jesus Christ the most. When you speak the name of Jesus Christ, then Satan will be bound. That's the name of Jesus Christ.
even Christians are abusing the name of God. I swear, I swear to God. Try to prove themselves like in, kind of right. We need to acknowledge him. We need to acknowledge and honor God even before the world, even before the people. That's the relationship that we need to have to God. This is Ten Commandments. Out of that, this is the first one. No other God before me. Do not even make any carved image, any carved image, which, which means don't even trust in that. Trust in me. I am way better than that. Do not even commit adultery against me. I love you. And can you boast about me even before the world? When you are at school, when you are at workplace, can you really testify who he is, how great it is, how gracious he is? I think this is a great um, kind of standards that we could check up on our relationship with God. Uh, this is not just um, rebuking people. But waking our soul, right? What am I doing? If, if we don't have like a standards, then we, we don't even know that we're, whether we are wrong or right, left or right. If there's no zero point, right? This is zero. And this is plus and minus. If we do not know this, then we don't even know where we are here or here. Sometimes our relationship with God, it's abstract, right? Because this is great in a system that we could know what kind of relationship that we have. Do I really believe that? His love. And we don't put any God, any form of God before him. Am I really Christian? Am I really believe that? Believing that he's the only one. I'm not going to rely on any, anything, any form of um, help. I'm respecting God. I'm acknowledging God even before the world. I'm not going to use the name of God uh, for my own sake. Uh, we're going to continue to uh, think about Sabbath next week. Uh, that's the, uh, another system that God has given us to really check up on our relationship with God. So let's pray. Once again, before he, you know, uh, proclaim or share this uh, commandment. He gave us the message of city of refuge. If you think that you kind of you are not in a good shape spiritually, run to the city of refuge. Run to Jesus Christ. He's going to save you. He's going to transform you. He's going to heal you. But at least we need to know that we are sick. Other than that, we're not going to feel that we need doctor. You know what I'm saying? We need to know that we got disease. That's why we need medicine. That's why we need doctor. Jesus said, doctor is for sick people 
and she just came as a doctor. So we need to really know, acknowledge that we are sinners. We are not doing all this. We even broke this covenant, commandment, every time, every moment. That's why I need Jesus Christ. That's why I need His blood. So, after receiving you know, this message, don't condemn yourself. Don't judge yourself. Go to God. Go to Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. God is not trying to condemn you, rebuke you. No. He's trying to show you where you are. Run to me. Run to me. Here I am with wide open arms.